Happy New Year, good people. Happy New Year, boss. Many happy returns, boss. There's no boss. Here. <laughs> this, 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 this is a flat structure. <laughs> this bless, this bless. Yeah. It's a new year. Yes. Yeah. And uh, many of our viewers have given us an insight on what they are expecting from citizens in okay. 2019. But we are picking up with uh, a key issue. We are looking at an Africa where there is freedom of movement for citizens. You know, when we are talking of the one African passport. You know which AU is initiating. We are also looking at an ECOWAS of people, you know, movement of people, movement of goods and services freely. Yet there is a canker worm in our African society, border harassment. What do you think about border harassment and uh, how is it affecting the development of the con continent? What's your take on border harassment on the continent? Have you had any experience so far? <laughs> uh, I'm actually from Benin and uh, I travel around the West African countries. I've been to Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Senegal, Mali, Burkina, so on and so forth. By road, of course, most of, most of the time. I mean, when it's for personal trip. And I can tell you that I experience it like a vivid way the way when we are talking about border harassment ongoing in the region and how this one is also impeding development or even trade among ourselves for example Eko has talked about uh, movement of goods and people when you look at even when the people cannot even move what about goods recently i was going to was it Burkina? yes i was going to Burkina. Uh, there were some ladies you know Burkina uh, is a landlocked country uh, they don't have a sea, so most of the time they also rely on those countries, those who are dissing by the sea, and uh, to furnish them or to get their goods. That lady, she bought the goods from Kodiwa. She was going, I think, sell it in Burkina. When she, uh, she reached the border, fine, me assuming that even the customer, they didn't do their work in Kodiwa. When she reached the border, the border, you have Kodiwa Castle, you have Burkina Castle. When Kodiwa, for example, they have done their work, Burkina, they have done their work that lady they should give a certified paper which shows that there's clearance that can i mean pave the way from the border up to the capital but you see that on the way so people have to be checking 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 and the, the, the funny thing is that you see officer that will come and the castle will come and tell you that give me money if you people you don't pay if you don't pay i will remove all your luggage you see, just to delay the process, so it makes it difficult, difficult to trade among us. That's why now you see that intra trade within the region among us African countries is just around 50 percent. That's what statistic is saying. But when you compare to other regions, it's higher than that because it's difficult. All these things are part of it. When you take, for example, someone from Europe, from China, who is bringing goods, it's through the sea or, or plane or whatever, they will not disturb them, they will not face this kind of challenges. So it's easier for them, that's why it's easier for them, you see, the goods from outside that is produced by foreign countries are flooding our market, compared to our own goods. Why you take today and say that I'm looking for rice, Cameroon rice or rice that is produced in Benin, let me go to market and buy it. It's so difficult, difficult to assess it, you really make it difficult for people to just trade among ourselves. So that's the one. And without trade, you cannot live in oh, this thing. Economy does not grow in Otasi. You have to trade with other people to grow your economy. So if this one is not solved, definitely it's affecting our development. Yeah. As a matter of fact. You, you know, when you're talking, I just thought it, you know, I was just trying to conceptualize what border harassment means. And to me, it's just making a traveler uncomfortable. You know, particularly in a situation where that traveler okay. has legal rights right. to travel but you create a perception that his travel his documents you know his goods are illegal and he needs to you know either go back or pay a certain ransom and these things they make you know the traveler i have actually had these experiences you know i am cameroonian i've traveled from yaoundé to accra by road fantastic experience you get to appreciate you know progress you know because i've done that and over a period of six months i came i did it again and you get to see how over time development you know is moving forward but what is quite frustrating is again the poor treatment 
you know and one time i was i left from accra to cameroon and between the between nigeria and cameroon i was already in the cameroonian territory like you said they had to stop our car because it was a family journey we're in, a, in the car in as a family they had to stop our car what they explain they are just our items as a family the car seat for the baby and some goods for my you know sister's wedding but the customs police officers not even customs officers they had to bring down our boxes open them look at the items one after the other and you know when he was fed up that there were no either contraband or business goods in it he now said we should pack up but these are the things that they make you the traveler frustrated you know and, and i'm asking myself how will a nigerian how will a Ghanaian who is coming to visit cameroon feel if he's treated that way and also another example i have going from uh, you know Cameroon to Nigeria. I was in the Nigerian territory now, you know, in the bus, you know, at approaching an immigration checkpoint. You know, the driver told us, all Cameroonians, give your 1,000 naira. And I'm like, why should I give 1,000 naira? My well, passport has been, person, exactly, my passport has been stamped uh, in the Cameroonian mm -hmm. territory and on the Nigerian territory. And when we got there, passengers even started telling us, if I don't give, they will leave me there. You know, if I don't give the 1,000 naira, they will leave me there. And when the immigration officers came and took a passport, all they needed was the 1,000 naira. You know, but these are things that exist on our continent, continent, in our regions, that frustrate, you know, movement of people, kills tourism, kills business, kills uh, cultural interrelations between nations. Integration. You know, integration. Yeah. It's yeah. killing that zeal of integration. But tell us, Christian, you know, what yeah. do you think about, you know, this phenomenon of border harassment? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I personally believe that uh, personal um, border harassment is something that is really and effectively impeding local development in the sense that one, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, I was going to, to go and Benin. And when we were at the borders, I noticed that some people were moving before the, the borders just to go and take a different way to pass with their goods. So I think that beyond just the movement of people, there is also a security dimension because most of the people who are trying to avoid the borders are taking other way. And sometimes they have been reported that some uh, uh, people like thieves are catching them, some have been killed, some have been stolen and all that. So I personally believe that at the level of the implementation, local government should make sure that the people that they are putting at the borders are trustworthy and that they should also try to find measure to fight corruption because all the issues that we have been talking up to now is more related to corruption because the law are there but it's now the implementation and how to make the people accountable to those that they are supposed to serve because I usually notice that most of the time when we look at police officers or those who are working at the borders, we mostly see them as if they are treat. But I don't think that it should be the case. We should rather see them as people who are there to protect and facilitate the, the process for us. So that, that is the, the key element that I wanted to, to highlight, the security dimension. People are losing their life because free movement is not effective. Thank you for enlightening that. You see what's up, you see what is happening within the region. We are talking about terrorists, radical movement and co. And you see that those who are the border, as Christian was saying, the focus is on monitoring aspect, how to get a thousand safer, how to get, I can tell you from each border within region here, what they take. Cote d'Ivoire border, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana border, they take 2,000. Mali, Mali, Cote d'Ivoire border, they take 2,000. That's at the border. Uh, Burkina, they take 1,000. To go Ghana, they take thousand, and so on. So for each one has its own rate, so, but it's not less than a thousand. The minimum is thousand. Some even go up to two thousand. So CFA, CFA. So that is a challenge. That security aspect. You see that when people come, the focus is about to get the two thousand thousand. When the guy comes, I'm, I'm me. I have travel with people who doesn't have any paper. I was having my passport. They said I should pay thousand because I'm not from that country. I should pay thousand. The guy was not having that or pass or paper. They didn't even question anything. They said just pay and go. This guy, we don't know where it's from. What is he doing? No question. But there is security threat. We are putting our country at jeopardize. We are jeopardizing our country because of what mm -hmm. thousand, two thousand. You see what's happened? When I was going to Burkina, or was it two years ago? I was going to Burkina, not in part of Ghana. I arrived there. These people they should pay. I said no, I have my resident pen, I have everything. Why should I pay? No, you have to pay. 
So I was debating with them. I was debating with them. But because this is like the way I, the, with the confidence I was speaking, these people at some point I said, ah, this guy, why, why do you work? So the guy asked me, why, why do you work? I said, yes, I work for NGO. So as part of this, our mission is to ensure that there's regional integration. So I'm doing my work. He said, really? So the guy said, do you know they removed my shirt that day that maybe I'm, I'm having a hidden camera? Remove my shirt, searching me. And they, you can you imagine that the driver came and told me that I'm wasting his time, that they want to go. I said, really? But people say I should pay 1000 Why should I pay 1000 When I was talking, the car left me and went to the booking on the other side. So why this people search, search me and they didn't see any camera now? He called me. The, the officer he called me at Ghana but the Northern part. He called me. He said, my brother, what you are saying, you are right. We all know that there is a room to fall. But the issue is that when our brother and like, Anglophone or Nigerian or Ghanaian, when they also go to Burkina, God, people also disturb them. That's why we also we have started. So, but I say, yo, it's not a reason. It's not an issue of retaliation. You, you should tell them, show them what is the best thing to do. It's not because someone is doing bad, you also should do bad. Why you also go to Burkina? Burkina also will tell you that it's Ghana who has started. Why you go to Nigeria? Nigeria will say it's Bedi. Why you go to Mali? Mali will say Kodiwa. So you don't know who is starting. But all of them are doing it on daily basis every day every you know take nigerian cameroon relationship it's it's in terms of people's being together i think they are more friendly there is little fear cameroonians from my um, appreciation and knowing nigerians we lived with we are not that scared you know yeah, that, or that we don't have this kind of, of but now the thing yeah, is the thing, the thing is in one word even Given the fact that we are not that scared of mm. Nigerians in Cameroon, yet at the Ekok border that's between Nigeria and Cameroon, mm. by road, mm -hmm. there is a police station, you know, in Ekok, where they ask Nigerians to pay, I think, a thousand francs, either a thousand or two thousand francs, you know. And because of that, it comes down to your point. When Cameroonians now go to the Nigerian territory, they tell us, our brothers, when they come to Cameroon, they, they are being asked money. So why shouldn't we ask money from you? You know, so I think... But who has started? Well, we can't know because <laughs> and we, we don't know the, <laughs> the, the, the history. The history <laughs> of it. And that's what I was saying, that border harassment is more a matter of corruption and trust. It's stupidity. I think I think those are some of the factors that yes. that, that contribute yeah. to yes. you know border harassment. You are talking of corruption. Yeah you know um yeah. uh, trust transparency, um, uh, transparency. Yes. but i also think is that uh, those people there they are not satisfied with their wages you know Yo, <laughs> no because even at the airport even at the airport in nigerian airport mm -hmm. you know um Gan Ghanaian airports cameroonian airport you know those officers there be even airport staff as they are opening your bag and claiming to be checking things, they will they talk to you. Can't you leave this five? Yes, sir, yes. Do they, what, there's no breakfast for officer. Yes, there's, there's no breakfast. They will tell you you don't need Ghanaian CD. Uh, you, 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 you don't need yeah. Naira in Ghana. Yeah. Just leave this Naira for me, or you don't need CFA where you're going to. You know, and all these things they create a sense of discontent. But I can also mm -hmm. add that they also also this in lack of mechanism to follow, like to ensure that our protocol or laws that we have enacted for the benefit of society is applied or adhered to. Now let's build on mechanisms to, to curb border harassment. What, what do we think, you know, are the measures that need to be put in place to ensure that this phenomenon is drastically reduced okay. and why not eliminated? And we should look at it from the people's perspective and government institutions perspective. What okay. do you think? I think, yes, uh, let me maybe go first. Uh, my issue is that we should know that when a law is enacted or that a protocol that has been ratified by a country, each citizen should make sure that that protocol is adhered to by each and every one. So it's, we should not throw only the balls in this thing, I mean, for government and other people or equals. We also, as a citizen, that's why we are having this platform today. We are talking about raise voice about it. We should also get involved. When you have the opportunity, there is opportunity for you to talk about it, to tell the guy, remain his rule, remain what Ekoa says, what is the protocol, what is a free, free movement of goods and person, remain and explain to him. Yes, you may face people that will say no. For example, I remember one day I was in uh, this Togo border, Togo, Ghana. And the guy asked me money. I said, but yes, I'm a co-citizen. Why should I pay? 
it's, it's, he called he call his, his second officer and tell him that he said this guy is talking about ECOWAS that come, come, he will explain to you ECOWAS, me I don't know what is ECOWAS so you see, that's, you face, like people will say no, resistance, you face resistance but be prepared for it, as much as possible, if there is opportunity for it you also get involved, you, I, I remember one of, I was attending one ECOWAS workshop, I raised that issue about this in border harassment in cool. one of the representatives for ECOWAS said something that I think is very important that I want to show you, he said that the issue is that what for example if we we take for example equals staff one staff per order what's happened that this guy or these people who put there will not also be corrupt so you see the issue is mindset this is what she says it's difficult so we citizen is all of us we are all equals equals is not a busy person we are all lost. let us all get involved as much as possible Thank okay you. and he has been talking about the level of the people me i want to tackle it from the level of institution institution there is one thing that we have noticed is that uh, most of the time diplomats are not involved in the process of uh, regional integration because border harassment is, more, is coming to the, the border dimension of uh, regional integration. So I believe that it is important to train diplomats on how to facilitate regional integration. What, are the diff what, what is their role in that process? Because beyond the police officers who are there, the diplomats also have to do cultural diplomacy to facilitate the process between the different countries. countries. I'm just going to take an At example. Of, yeah, I'm just going to take an example on how diplomacy can help. When you go from uh, from Ghana to Togo by road, you will notice that all the people are paying one one thousand. But when you are a Cameroonian, you have to pay twenty five thousand. Is that not the visa fee? It's not visa yes, issue. It's a visa fee. We, uh, which, that, is, which is right. Mm -hmm. okay. That means, yes. yes, if you are part, the, because we are not part of ECOWAS. Yes, but the, but the thing is that the visa fee for Cameroonian is different from the one of other countries. If I take the example of those who are coming from Gabon, it's 10,000. I also think that anyway, yeah, I think it it, 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 it solidifies what you're talking about cultural yeah. diplomacy cultural because diplomacy. It, it comes it brings to the fore the kinds of diplomatic relationships between the say, two countries be, between the two yeah. countries. And another element also that I would like to highlight is that the level of uh, border harassment we also have to tackle it from inside the country to make people understand what is the importance of letting people move from one place to another. Because mm -hmm. as uh, Leon has highlighted, many people are not informed. They don't know what is their right, they don't know what is the benefit, they don't know what is what regional integration or free movement can bring to the country. They are only thinking about themselves, but they are not looking at, on the long term. You know, you know, facilitating more education mm -hmm. from the bottom, you know, from the lower level to the higher level. Yes, at the university is good, but why not create as part of our civic education? you know, include lessons on regional integration. So while you're studying civic education in Burkina Faso, you start knowing that Ghanaians can come freely with that. You start knowing about the visa, you start knowing about the passport. And if you have an ECOWAS passport, what does that entail? If you have an African Union passport, what does that entail? What does that, what are your rights when you were as a traveler on this passport, you know? So education, on, 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 on movement, movement on free yeah. movement, yeah. on border regulations. And the benefits. And the, the benefits. benefits. And yeah. the benefits. So much so that right from that level, it's, it's, it becomes an, a, cultural a cultural practice based on the education you've gotten from school. Yeah. So much so that as we grow, then you start specializing at the tertiary level to become a diplomat or, or cultural uh, diplomat or whatever. But I think these are quite uh, wonderful values. Certainly we've not exhausted yeah, everything. Yeah. But well, I think we, did, we didn't touch maybe government. Government also should make sure that when the protocol <laughs> is approved or ratified, there is this thing, we ensure that it's enforced. For example, if you see officer who is taking money and we bring evidence, they should sanction that guy. That's you right. should have make any sanction him. And that's Those why, I like, uh, it's not a West African country. That's why I think Ka Kagame, His Excellency Ka Kagame is effective. In the sense that he has been able to put mechanism and structure in place to make sure that the public servant are accountable. When you are in Rwanda, at the, from the airport to the public service, it's difficult to see corruption visibly. You have to use different way of corrupting someone. But it's Afri or mostly in West Africa, people don't hide. Mm. It is obvious. They are not. It's like it's part of life. It's part of the system. They are saying, part, ah, yeah, okay. you, you don't understand the system. You yeah, pay, you, you go. You don't pay. You stay. You, you stay here. Yeah. Yeah.
But it's sad, it's sad. Yeah, Only yeah, one person yeah. take plane. Most of I, ninety percent of the population are travel by home, yeah. and they experience all this all the time. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think these things exist. Um, that's why the citizens uh, platform exists. You know, to raise these issues, and we invite you to join us in these conversations. Tap on tap us on Facebook, and we will respond. And why not bring you on set? Thank you. Have a wonderful 2019. Citizen. Citizen. <laughs> <laughs>